And a very good morning to you. This is Newsline Live. We're broadcasting from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo, as we do always. And uh, this morning, as I start the proceedings with Newsline Live, I'll bring you the up-to-date uh, global uh, COVID-19 figures. We have, unfortunately, gone beyond a, the big milestone. 1,021,745, 1,021,745 people are confirmed around the world to having been infected by COVID-19. Of them, very, very, very sadly indeed, 53,400 people have passed away. And the positive note is that 209,765 people have actually recovered. In Sri Lanka, the figure has gone up to 151 confirmed patients. Four have sadly died and 21 have recovered. Now, putting it in context, this 21 recovered is the same as it was yesterday. Yesterday, this time in the morning, it was 146 people confirmed. To this morning, it's 151. It's been on the up since the time we've, I've been making notes, actually. Um, I started making the notes when it was 100, and today it's 151, suggesting that uh, there's much to be done. Let's find out about what that much to be done is. We've got here, live in the studio, Professor Indika Karunatilaka, who is, of course, the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, the professional body of medical in the medical world. He's right here, Professor Indika Karunatilaka. Very good morning to you. Very good morning to you, Mr. Faras. Uh, thank you very much for being on our program. Very important. I was wondering when it is that the professionals will land here. And uh, here you are, you've landed here. So tell us, uh, because um, the public may well want to know this, what's the difference between the SLMA and the GMOA? Uh, okay, so Sri Lanka Medical Association is, like you very correctly mentioned, that's a professional body of the medical uh, profession in the country. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the oldest in this region, yeah. uh, 135 years old Medical Professional Association, the National Medical Professional Association. So we represent all the categories of doctors. They may be government, private sector, UN agencies, or any other category. Maybe general doctors, maybe specialists. We represent all these categories. And all the expert colleges in medicine, if you take different specialties or subspecialties, they work in collaboration with us. So that means we represent the professionals in the medical profession in the country. I see. Uh, and the GMO is the uh, trade union? Uh, GMO is a trade union. The Medical Council is the authoritative statutory legal body. The so, Medical Council? Yeah, so there are three bodies that we are talking right. about. Yes. So the, and where does the epidemiology unit uh, fit in all this? The epidemiology unit is under the Ministry of Health. Right. And they play a very important role here. I yes. think the most important role here because this is all about prevention and control in the disease. Right. So that is the unit who looks after the numbers, the strategies of prevention. So that is the key unit at the moment. And we work in very close collaboration with the epidemiology unit. Actually, they're the boss. Then we need to do what they say. I won't say boss. I think all of us are stakeholders. Yes, in I know. But what, what I'm saying is they know, they know what's they happening. They are the experts. In they the experts they in are virus. the experts in yeah. this control. The control in epidemics is under their purview, their right. expertise. Is there, is, there a, um, is there some sort of competition between the different bodies and, and therefore does that competition, if there is such such thing, uh, does it impact on uh, the ability to bring this uh, matter under control? I don't think there should be any competition. There, there shouldn't be. Either. There should not be. There, 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 is there? Th this, is, this is the time to work together. Right. This is the time to work together. Are you all working together? 
we are working together. We are working together from the very beginning. Actually, right. the Sri Lanka Medical Association, we have been working together with the Ministry of Health yeah. and the UN agencies, mainly WHO mm. and the government of Sri Lanka from the very beginning. Mm. For example, when the first imported case was detected, mm. that was on 27th of March. On 30th of March, uh, SLMA conducted first ever large-scale seminar or the conference right. on this issue. Because mm. at that time, no one really knew about this virus. So we wanted to find out what is the best evidence, the knowledge worldwide, and how can we move forward. Mm. So it was arranged by the SLMA, and it was participated by over 400 doctors in the country face to face, and there are about more than 1,000 attending online. So mm. that means that was the point that we have come into uh, some kind of consensus agreement on how to face this problem. And right. since then, we have been working on the capacity building of doctors mm -hmm. and working on policy development, predictions, and uh, it was a very close collaboration with yeah. the ministry and the UN agency. So I would say it's teamwork. Indeed. Uh, do please uh, have your cup of tea, uh, Doctor. Uh, uh, professor. Now then, I want to know, is Sri Lanka doing, doing it right? The figures slowly but surely going up again. On the 26th of March it was 102. Today it's 151, just as we start our day today. Um, are we doing the right thing? I would say. Are we doing everything? What is the, any adupadu? What is it? In, I would say we have been doing right and a lot depends on our decisions and the pathways that we are taking during next two weeks or so. When I you say our decisions, the decisions of people? The, the countries, the country. Yeah. At, that involves everyone actually. Right. The government, the health and the, the tri forces and the police, law enforcement and very importantly the citizens of Sri Lanka. The people of the, the people are the most important. Right. Yeah. So what must the people do? What must the people do? Yes, uh, to answer that question, uh, in general the government has been doing the very best, listening to the experts and taking the correct decisions. Mm -hmm. And the professionals, professional bodies have been working together and doing the right thing. So right. the most important responsibility of the people is one thing is have trust. Because mm -hmm. there is a lot of misinformation going on. Yeah. It should not happen. This is a time to have trust. Right. And follow the advices of the government and the health authorities. The to, most the, to the letter. To the letter. To the letter. We have to follow it to the letter. Most important, avoid crowded places. Right. Follow basic hand hygiene. Okay. Two messages. Use that. Use things like this. Yes, the, exactly. Things like this. The, the hand sanitizer. Very, very simple, very simple. But effective. Very effective. Very effective. Very effective. Very effective. And this is what, am I doing it right? This is what we've got to do. You, you're doing it very correct. Right. Because the reason is, the reason is this virus, even though this is a new virus, yeah. now the scientists know a little bit about it. Right. And one thing we know for sure is that it is covered by a fat layer. Ah. And soap can very easily dissolve fat. Ah. So, so do so 65, so does 65 percent alcohol. Right. So when you do that, you are basically damaging the virus. So you're getting rid of it. You're getting rid of it. Die the virus. Die the virus, exactly. Right. Kill it. Kill the virus. Good. So um, there are many questions on the minds of the people. One is, um, I know that uh, the economy, of course, is the biggest uh, issue in, in this whole thing. People are wondering, you know, how are businesses going to cope? Are people hotel industry, you know, the hotels are obviously zero at the moment. Um, and uh, so there are a lot, the lives and uh, the, the financial part of people's lives are severely impacted and so on. Um, what will happen? How long will this um, curfew situation last? Everybody is asking that question. When do you think this curfew will be lifted? Yes. Um, before answering that question, am I allowed to explain the current situation? Of course. Please and, do. That's yes. the best thing to do. Yes. So, if you take the current Sri Lankan situation, I would say that is a mixture of controlled and uncontrolled. Right. Uh, first, after the first imported case was detected, then there was a long gap. Then there, uh, there was a starting of uncontrolled 
patients coming in. For example, there were overseas returnees who are coming in and uh, then few others as well. So by that time, it was uncontrolled, uncontrolled surge of patients initially because the systems are slowly developing, the mm -hmm. quarantine processes and because this is, not, this is not something that we have ever faced. Yeah. So by that time, the initial phase, there's one group of patients, the overseas returnees. So that happened in an uncontrolled manner. Right. Then the government took very quick steps to quarantine and isolate and treat. Mm. So later what happened is a kind of controlled transmission because many of the returnees, many of the patients, either they were treated in the hospital, the mm. patients, mm. and other returnees, they were sent to quarantine camps or maybe home quarantine. So the military intelligence really helped in this? Definitely, no, no, no doubt about it. It's military intelligence as well as the public health system of Sri Lanka. Mm. They have done a phenomenal job. That's grand. That's absolutely grand. So then tell me more. This is sounding interesting. Very interesting. Yes. So we are looking at a controlled situation. That's why compared to other countries, our numbers are comparably low. Right. I mean, other countries, thousands. Yeah. But ours is, we were keeping less than 100 till very recent. So that was because of the very strong preventive system, the health system, and the support by the government mechanism, mm -hmm. especially the especially mm -hmm. the, the tribe forces. Yeah. And however, I said that there, there was the, the initial phase. So initially, the initial cluster of patients coming in like this, the returnees, yeah. then slowly the second wave, second group, mm. the people who got the infection in Sri Lanka from them. So the initial curve going like that, then there's another group after two weeks, another group picking up. Right. What we are seeing at the moment is that group. So we say we are at the level three of the epidemic. Level one is uh, no patient, level two is very few patient, level three is patients are detected in groups or mm. clusters. Mm. We are still at that level. Fourth level is that the epidemic going into the community and then spreading in an uncontrolled manner mm. and duplicating and the exponential increase. That is what you see in many other countries, even in developed countries. We haven't gone into that situation yet. What about Italy? Is that Italy in that Very position? much they have gone into that situation. If I may explain what is happening there, mm. uh, a corona patient, a patient affected by coronavirus, in general, they can infect about one to five people mm -hmm. on average maybe two people mm -hmm. this is what we call the infectivity mm -hmm. and in statistics we call it r number right so and the incubation period is from two days to two weeks right so that means yeah approximately once in every two weeks yeah the number get doubled oh so that becomes a kind of exponential increase because you start small with two, mm -hmm. but then it can become 100. Yeah. 100 can become 200, 400. Mm. And then you can imagine within very few cycles, yeah. it can engulf the whole country. Okay. We should not allow that uncontrolled exponential increase to happen. Mm -hmm. What happened in Sri Lanka is a controlled spread so far because of the government measures. But having said that, I mentioned two words, controlled and uncontrolled. Within this control, there was some deviation from control, yeah. like the crowd gathering, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Generally, the crowd have been brilliant, but there were, the Sri Lankan people have been brilliant, but mm -hmm. there were some instances where this adherence to this strict control has lapsed. So well, that, that's uh, not making any excuses for them, but I don't think that at the beginning they, uh, they took on board the severity uh, of the problem. I don't think so because data is emerging. Now only we are seeing what is happening in other countries. Mm. So now that, that picture, the global picture is very gloomy at the moment. So now I think the, uh, we, are, we are seeing the gravity. So people are slowly realizing the gravity of the situation and they are adhering. But there were some instances. So what we are seeing actually is the infection that has happened about two weeks ago because as I have mentioned before, the incubation period is two to two weeks. So mm. what we are seeing at the moment is the, is the cumulative result of the control that was exerted and then the deviations. Mm. So what we are seeing is a combination. Well, uh, still people are, um, uh, there are still a group of people uh, out there who don't seem to understand 
the need to uh, respect uh, the rule of law. And uh, this is not, this, it's not funny, or it's not a joke, uh, or it's not political that um, the country is under a state of curfew. And uh, for uh, four people uh, this morning, it must have come as a shock in their lives because three of them were injured and one has been arrested after police opened fire on their car in um, uh, Panadura, in the Panadura area for ignoring a, um, uh, obviously, for ignoring a order to stop. Well, you know, if, if you are not uh, permitted to be on the road and with the relevant pass and so on, you must not dare step out of your homes. Do so at your peril. And remember, if you're in the car and they take the car away too, it will not be released. They've already told us that. It will not be released until after this whole matter of COVID-19 is resolved and sorted out. So you've got only yourself to blame. Do not break the rules. If you break the rules, you do so at your own peril. Um, the, the, um, the Sri Lanka Medical Association, um, what can we do now? Can, what, is there something that we can learn from what's happened around the world? Yes, we can learn a lot from what's happening in other countries. Now, different, different countries have faced this situation in different ways in their own contexts. Yeah. But one thing we should say is every country is doing their best. Mm -hmm. Some countries, it might have not worked the, the pathway or the stance that they have taken. But having said that, every country is doing their best. And some countries, they have managed to control it. If you take Japan, Singapore, or now China and Hong Kong, uh, those countries, they have managed to control it. Have they really managed to control it, uh, Professor, or are they controlling their media? No. The transparency is very, very important. Yeah. And in this global village, I don't think you can hide figures. Mm -hmm. So those countries have done well. Part of the success is actually transparency. Right. If there's any country who are hiding their figures, they can't do it that in this game. You cannot because transparency is absolutely important. Right. You have to be very transparent with the numbers and the situation. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, what will happen come two weeks' time? The Singhalese in Tamil New Year. That's one sort of timeline on our on our calendars. What yeah. will happen yeah. during Vesak? Yeah. So all these high concentration events. Yeah. What will happen depends on what we do. Okay. As a country, as a nation. Yeah. The worldwide evidence, the statistical predictions, the ex expert opinion, Sri Lanka. What we can predict is, if this current, current tight control can be maintained, yeah. everything should be fine. And people might ask for how long. Yes. What worldwide evidence says is, if you look at any country, say China. Now, you may remember that it didn't finish in one week, two weeks. It took about, about two to three months. Mm -hmm. And in other countries. Now, Italy, the situation is very bad, but now you can see the curve in Italy is slowly going down. Increase, now it's flattening and starting to come down. Right. So, in that case, we are looking at, in general, if you let it lose, maybe a few months. However, what the scientific evidence worldwide and our projections conducted by Sri Lanka Medical Association in collaboration with the University of Colombo oh. and the Epidemiology Unit. I must thank Professor Manoj Veerasinghe and uh, Mr. Nishant Perera of the Mathematics Department and the University of Colombo and the SLME for coming out with a mathematical model, model and ac accurate projection. What we can see at the moment is if we keep a very tight control Towards next two weeks time, we might see about 200 patients. That is the increase going like a line. But if there is some deviation or lack of adherence, then it might go up to 275. But moderate level of deviation where people coming into roads, like what is happening at the moment, yeah. we are looking at the numbers around 300, 400 during that time period. Mm -hmm. But even more deviation, we may be looking at 
1500. Having said that, if the situation totally go goes out of control, no model can predict what is going to happen. It is mm -hmm. going to be utter chaos. So, it depends on the control that we are exerting. Again, what worldwide data says is, mm. initially you exert as much pressure, pressure as possible. Overreaction is much better than underreaction. Tight control Overreaction is, is much better than underreaction. Under yeah. And tight control and if you look at many other countries, what happens is when this curve goes up and then start to go down, it takes about two incubation periods to make sure that it is really going down, to make sure that you are really winning. And are the people, because this is a time for strong leadership from everybody, um, like you've said about your own SLMA yeah. and uh, the, um, the Sri Lanka Medical Council uh, and so on, um, your, uh, and the very important epidemiology unit very important. giving us all the uh, wonderful, uh, they, they, they're really on the ball. The, the, the expertise. The expertise. Yes. Now all that, and it's all down to leadership. Um, in that uh, context, will, will Sri Lanka still be closed down during the new year? I think I must say to the governments, the credit of the government, to the credit of government and the Ministry of Health, they have been listening to the voice of the experts. Yes, and what and does the voice of the experts say? Because this is only about two weeks away now. It's uh, today is the third. Experts say is exert tight control. Exert so tight shut control. It down. Not Keep exert, it shut down. Uh, I wouldn't say shut it down. I, I would say tight control. So the current current tight control is Should one go on till when? Till the end of April? Uh, if we go by the statistical modeling, yeah. uh, we are talking about two incubation period. That's about one month period. Right. Yes. So about a mo month? About a month. About a month. A month from like today? Uh, month from, yeah, it can slightly vary. I mean, because we have started yeah, this okay. tight control some time ago. Let, let, let's have a straight answer. Yeah. Till when? Till the end of April? Towards the end of April. At least. At least. Uh, I, I would say if we, if we do it correctly, yeah. by the end of the April, we would be seen. We'll be on top. Uh, we'll that on, curve will be down. Uh, curve will, not only curve will be down. I mean, the idea is not getting the curve down. Say, if we ex exert this tight control, hopefully within next two weeks, we would be seen curve turning. Oh. The downward curve. Okay. And if you exert it straight away, because the current thinking is you crush this. Yeah. You crush this attack. Right. Once you crush and then bring it down to a very low level. Right. Then you can slowly relax, slowly release, and then have control measures on. This is a strategy that some experts say the, the hammer and the dance method. Right. Yeah. You hammer it first, you control it. Sri Lanka has done it from the very beginning. That's why Sri Lanka's situation is li little different from other countries. Uh, apart from maybe one or two weeks where we got the systems going, yeah. uh, Sri Lanka has exerted tight control mm -hmm. from the very beginning, even though there were deviations. So and um, on the Newsline Live, we encourage you to send us your questions. Uh, I know that some peop many people have already uh, been uh, texting away this morning to 0772-300-305 by text only to 0772-300-305. It's live right here. And uh, I... I, I I'm grateful to the person who sent this uh, this message, and uh, with your permission as well, Please. let me let me read this out. It's a very uh, important message. It's commenting on what we just spoke about, the uh, the need to close down uh, or to continue with these measures until beyond the Singhala Tamil New Year. And here he goes. It says here, as a Singhala Buddhist, I can say that there is nothing to believe that overrides the national concerns at this time. As a singular Buddhist, I can say that there is nothing to believe that overrides the national concerns at this time. Thank you for that uh, wonderful message. And please, do not telephone this number during the program. Uh, this is for SMS only, please. Thank you. Um, and uh, because some people try to phone up, but still. Um, so the overriding concern is to control this. Control, control, control. control. No, not actually control, crush it. Crush it. Got to crush attack, it. Attack, attack it, 
rigorously. Don't take any chances. Because we are a country. We are they a say that the best form of defense is to attack. The best form of defense is attack. If we are defensive, yeah. because virus is, if you are defensive, the virus is two weeks ahead of us. Because the figures that we are seeing yeah. are the infection that happened two weeks ahead. Yeah. So we had to be ahead of the virus. Right. Attack and it. it says here. Uh, despite all the media publicity, places like Manning Market, economic centers, hundreds of people are brushing each other as the government is attempting to show that there is enough to eat. But control of the distancing by any force is not seen at all. The distancing. Do you think we need to give a uh, small call to the tri forces and the commander? The, uh, I mean, tell him that, look, the, the public are complaining that in these crowded places like um, in the economic centers and so on, there is not enough of distancing uh, being kept. Yes. Now, we have to look at in this situation, the priority at the moment is controlling. Mm -hmm. That is maintaining the distancing and avoiding crowd control. At the same time, at the same time, we need to have some mechanisms where the essential needs, like the medicines, or the food, those essential needs are addressed. Right. So, I suppose now slowly mechanisms are happening and taking place. Mm. And I think there should be strategies to make sure that the food supplies are coming in. Right. But without jeopardizing this basic principle of control, mm -hmm. there need to be mechanisms to mechanisms to distribute drugs, medicines, attend to other health needs, and also the food. The two two basics. Yes. Now so, yesterday. Um, the government announced uh, previously that uh, they were going to open the pharmacies and so on. And that was uh, essentially to help out uh, the pensioners who had received their pension and, and therefore the, uh, the um, Triforce and so on getting involved in taking them to get their pensions and then go and buy their medicines. Uh, so that sort of thing is good. Um, and the government is saying that they are uh, encouraging this online business, you know, uh, to, to be all to be done remotely. Um, is this, are these measures good enough? Or is there some more to be done? I think evolving because, again, as I said, this is not a situation that any of us have faced before. Right. So systems, those kind of systems are not there. Right. So th I can see the systems are slowly evolving. It may not be 100% perfect at the moment. It yeah. will not be because it's not a situation that we have been prepared. But things are slowly happening. Right. So I think the, the uh, authorities, the government uh, will slowly develop, not slowly, I mean in a methodical way, they will develop the systems to ensure the basic essentials like the, the medicines and the health sector going. We need to keep the health sector going, mm. not only the COVID. I mean, we have to look at the other health sector as well, the management of non-communicable diseases. So how to get the other routine health sector going, how to address this issue and also how to address the people uh, that people are getting essentials. So that is where you need to have a kind of a range of mechanisms, maybe online, but not everyone can go online. So there need to be other local level mechanisms also, using mm. maybe the Gramani Radari or the public health midwife, so that they are also getting involved. So this tight control doesn't mean that no one can get, get out of the home. The, 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 that it doesn't mean that it's total exclusion. No, not total exclusion. There need to be mechanisms in a controlled manner. For example, there can be a system where one person can come out during one particular time period and get the essentials and get back. But then the responsibility is with us, with the people, with the country, that we should be responsible enough not to misuse those measures. And uh, it's a question I think that it's not asked often enough. So let me ask you. What of the healthcare workers, people who are working in the healthcare, what of their well-being? Are they looked after? Are they safe themselves away from the virus? I think that's the most important question that we have asked so far because they are the people in the front line, yes. the doctors and the nurses who face the, uh, the problem in the wards or in the clinic settings and in the field, the field health workers because they are in the people who are risking the most and their safety and the well-being. Mm. For example, even during curfew period, they have to go to work. Yeah. So how to ensure the basic essentials uh, that are 
uh, provided to them. And in that case, actually, we have introduced one model to uh, provide, say, rather than health workers crowding in supermarkets which is very risky for the general public as well as health workers. Mm -hmm. A system where you can provide dry rations, uh, pre-packed dry rations to the hospital itself and distribute it without crowding the place, overcrowding the place. Mm -hmm. So we need to go for those kind of mechanisms. Transport is very, very important yeah. and there need to be transport measures. And you can't crowd the buses with the healthcare workers. That again we are promoting infection. So we have to develop mechanisms. Those mechanisms I can say, I can see that they are evolving. They are, they are slowly evolving and even accommodation. Now okay, like so in the what's happening with that? Yeah, like in the past, now health workers can be very concerned about going home yeah. because they may be carrying the infection. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. so there need to be measures to uh, educate them because this is very new to them. What are the preventive measures? What are the things that you can do when you are in the hospital, in the field? And what can you do when you go back home? Because oh, education plays a big role. Providing the facilities for them plays a big role. What of the uh, accident and emergency services, uh, the, you know, the units there, the a &E units uh, around the country, um, is the workload reduced? Workload, I mean, uh, I'm not in a position to give you the exact figures, right. but uh, there was a period in the country after the curfew that the number of patients in the hospitals were less. Right. But now we can see a trend that it is slowly increasing. Mm. As the expert bodies the SLMA and we have all the professional colleges with us. What we think is, this is our this was our recommendation the Ministry of Health, that the, the normal health system, the routine health system yeah. should be separated from COVID management. Right. So those hospitals, the bigger hospitals, yeah. they have to restart the routine work because there are many other patients yeah. uh, suffering. So we need to take care for them. And there need to be another hospital dedicated system yeah. for the suspected COVID. Right. Yeah, we can have a triage process, yes. separating out, sorting out, and getting the fee of patients to dose. Right. And from there, for the diagnosed, right. we need to have a separate dedicated COVID hospitals. At the moment, again, to the credit of the Ministry of Health, they are basically in the process of establishing that. Right. Yeah. So, I think the health system should go on. Healthcare professionals and the workers should be given all the support and the encouragement at this moment. Um, good. There are, there are many messages here uh, and one of them is quite important. Will the pharmacies be open today and tomorrow? Yeah, that, that was the announcement that, that was came from the, that was yes. the, I mean, again, I mean. There are uh, no announcements to say uh, otherwise. There, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the government decision. So yeah. there, there need to be mechanisms like that and we should not be misusing that opportunity yeah. or, the, or the mechanisms that have been established. Uh, professor, going by the situation reports uh, on the uh, WHO website, it is evident that the spreading of the virus in two regions, Africa and Southeast Asia, are not as much as in uh, the other regions in the world. Please elaborate on that. Yes, again, we cannot say for sure, but one thing is, if you compare with the health systems yeah. in these regions, especially the testing facilities, are minimal. So it may be, just may be, that still they are not detecting the actual number of patients. How about in Sri Lanka? Do we have enough testing facilities? At the moment, I would say yes, because, I mean, th this is a very controversial and contentious area. Yeah. And uh, we, as professionals, we are all in one voice that we need to increase and the, improve the testing capacity. Having said that, currently, I will explain it. Mm. Currently, we, the Sri Lanka as a country has a capacity to do 500 tests right. per day. 500 tests per day. 500, 500 tests, per tests per day. Tests per day. What right. we are doing is, it's a test called PCR, where you detect, where you detect the genetic material of the virus right. through the polymerase chain reaction. That's the that's one of the best tests. How long the, does this take, test take to do? Within few, within one day, you can get the results. Is it? Uh, 
Uh, what, what can you describe this? Uh, it's called polymerase chain reaction or the PCR. This virus is a RNA. The nucleic acid is RNA virus. Yes, but what do you, how do you do this test? Is it to take some blood out? Do you have to put a swab in your mouth? What, okay. what is it? Yeah, again, I would say, I mean, I am not a microbiologist or virologist, but yeah. I, I represent this body of knowledge of all the expert yeah. colleges. How this happens is you have to take generally the, I mean, you can take material from your respiratory system right. generally. Right. It could be from the upper respiratory or the lower respiratory. Right. So you can either take a soap from your throat mm -hmm. or maybe from your nose. Right. And there is some evidence that you can even use saliva as well. Right. And in severe, serious patients, critical patients, you can aspirate the secretions from the lung, right. the respiratory system, right. what we call the bronchialveolar lavage. Right. So in whatever way you get this the infected material, right. infected material and test their genetic material. Right. So what you need is not blood. Right. It is yeah okay. basically so it's, yeah. it's from your from the respiratory system. Right. Yes. And um, where can these tests be done? Uh, in the Ministry of Health has identified many hospitals and many centers. And do you need a prescription before you can have the test done? Uh, because the, otherwise you'll have people queuing up at the hospitals that that would be a big problem so yeah. the best would be the best would be if you have those symptoms now actually the the criteria yeah. for suspecting covid-19 has been relaxed now right so uh, previously the contract history was followed very strictly right. but not anymore right so uh, the advice that we can give to the general public is if you have symptoms now the the commonest symptoms like fever yeah. or the sore throat uh, or maybe a dry cough. Right. So if you have those symptoms, first get the advice of a medical professional. Right. Rather than visiting the hospital, you can phone. Now there are systems emerging. Sri Lanka Medical Association, we have introduced a system where you can just dial 247. 247. 247. Sri Lanka Medical Council. Medical Association. Medical Association. And Sorry, you, SLMA. SLMA. 247. And dial the number 247. Or, you, doctor, doctor. Yeah, and uh, or else if you don't have a mobile from a landline, 1247. So from a landline, it's 1247. 1247 on a landline, yeah. and you'll talk to a doctor. Yes, and it's completely free. You'll be connected to a doctor, and you can choose any of the three national languages, mm -hmm. either Sinhala, Tamil, or English. Right. And then you will be given advice. It is not only about COVID actually, yeah. because in this situation, you have to, our, as a national organization, we have to help the patient to avoid the hospitals. And that would help to avoid overcrowding of the hospitals as well. So there are many mechanisms for the patient to call the doctor right. and get the advices. And they will advise. Another very important message is if you have those respiratory symptoms, stay at home and, and wear a mask. If okay. you have those symptoms. Now then, a citizen with suspected COVID needs to know whom to ring. So if you know that you've got it or you believe you have it, who do you ring? Who do you phone? Obviously, a doctor. Right. So, so that, is that 247 a good number to dial? It's definitely a good number. Having said that, there are many other mechanisms coming That's up right. also. Yeah. I mean, we are fine. I mean, even if you know a doctor personally, that's also okay. Yeah. Or if you can call your hospital, because hospitals are open. Indeed. And your general practitioners are there, you can call them. No, so no, no. Yes, sorry. Uh, so, so call a doctor. If you, if you suspect that you have uh, the virus, call, uh, call a doctor. And m many, many, many uh, messages here this morning to tell us that they agree uh, the, with the government measures to keep the system closed as far as possible, obviously with some leeway uh, because we are not in some um, sort of a satanic state. So people, there is some leeway, uh, but it's very, very uh, critical that you follow the main rules. Lots of them are in fully agreement. Yes. One question though is asking me, is, it, uh, is there any legal or other measures that's preventing you from um, publicly naming these patients mm -hmm. or those infected rather 
Yes. Now, we, we are talking about the medical ethics yeah. and there are ethical aspects as well as the legal aspects also. Right. Having said that, this is a very complex situation. Mm. In medical ethics, we are talking about the patient's autonomy as well as confidentiality. Yeah. At the same time, we are talking about the benefit of the patient and the benefit for the larger public. Indeed. So, all these, all these different principles are clashing here. So, at this moment, you need to think about the benefit of the patient as well as the larger public. Uh, what I should say is divulging confidential information like the name or very sensitive personal information should not be done, should not be done. Right. But the fact that a patient has been detected yeah. from this area, that is fine as long as we do not divulge the personal information because there are two ethical principles that are clashing here. But naming the patient, putting the photographs without the consent. Mm. Now you can see Prince Charles and others, they are coming out. Yeah. But that is with the consent. Yeah. But without the consent, putting photographs or visuals is unethical. Yeah. So I think the best thing is to allow the health authorities right. to do the tracking because we have a very strong system in Sri Lanka, allow the health authorities to identify the contacts, trace the contact and isolate them. I want to ask you this question. If you feel that you are unable to answer it, uh, we'll, we'll forget yeah. about that bit and then go on uh, to the, towards the end of this program. But my question to you is uh, one that several of our um, viewers have raised oh, over the last few days, and that is this. If somebody dies from COVID-19, God forbid, but you know, when somebody dies, how long in that body will this um, virus last? And so that leads then to other things like burial versus cremation and so on. What's the, what's the rule? It's, it's a very, very important but very contentious question, I yes. would say. I, I only want you to give yeah. me the medical answer. Medical answer. Yeah. The medical answer that I can give is, one thing is, nobody really knows about this virus. There are only data that is coming up mm -hmm. because this virus was identified only two, three months ago. Yeah. So nobody really knows how many years mm. or how many months or how many days this virus lasts. There are research data. So in that case, yeah. and, and where it survives. Yeah. So in that case, the best from the medical point of view is follow the, the best available precautions, safest yeah. precautions. And uh, is it a good idea to be governed by the World Health Organization uh, and so on? Uh, who may have more access to a to greater amount of data and so on? It would be a very good idea to govern by the World Health Organization as well as the, the local government, the mm -hmm. Sri Lankan government. And in hand in hand because World Health Organization is for the whole world. Mm. But from country to country, the situation changes. Mm -hmm. For example, Sri Lanka is an island. Mm -hmm. The water level is rather high. Yeah. But some other countries, it may be different. Okay. So all these things vary. So my advice is, I mean, at this moment, the most important is follow the World Health Organization guidelines and the government guidelines. Wherever there is a discrepancy, yeah. follow the government guidelines. Right. Wonderful. Um, Professor Indika uh, Karnatilaka, thank you very much for having been on Newsline Live. It's been uh, uh, informative and uh, of course um, uh, we, the public appreciate it. But more than anything else, the public appreciate, as indeed our network does, the invaluable and the selfless uh, work that the health care workers in our country are doing. And of course, our tri forces have come, and the police have come together. And Sri Lanka is um, very grateful. Sri Lanka is fortunate that we have such dedicated pro professionals uh, looking after our wider, uh, our wider well-being, actually. And for that, I think we should all start a national clap uh, one of these days uh, to appreciate uh, the um, to appreciate all that hard and dedicated service, selfless really, that they're doing. So when you feel a little bit frustrated with the policemen out there or whatever with the rules, uh, take a deep breath and think about it because actually you're doing that uh, for the greater benefit of 
fellow human being, fellow citizens, your brothers, your sisters, our brothers, our sisters. We are all in this game, in this serious matter, together. Uh, Professor, thank you very much. Thank Do you. convey to every health worker that you see uh, that uh, our network and uh, the people are thinking of them and are grateful to them. Thank you, and thank you so much for giving us this platform. Absolute pleasure. And uh, that's the way it was, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Have a wonderful day ahead of you as much as you can. And, of course, remember that in this we are all together. One nation, one country, one people. God bless.